All right, let's talk about advanced daggers, which are new in GSAP 2.1. So here we've got a timeline that is set up and it's got a single stagger to call and we're just animating the scale and the Y position of uh, 15 divs that each have the class of box applied to them. And here's the key. We've got the good old stagger value, the parameter set to 0.1, which is the number of seconds that is going to be in between the start times of each of the animations. So if I change this to 0.5, you'll see that it gets a little more exaggerated here. And that's the old way. So the new way, and by the way, the old way still works just fine in 2.1. You don't have to change your code if you don't want to, but you just have the option of saying stagger and putting it there instead. So that just makes it a little more readable. So that'll work but that's not very advanced. Uh, to be advanced, we're gonna use the object syntax here. This allows us to define a bunch of new and interesting things. So to get back to where we were, we can say uh, each, and that's the, the timing. We want, again, 0.1 seconds in between each one, or we can say amount, which this is like the total amount of time that's gonna be spread out between all of those. So it just gives you some options and that can be nice if you want to kind of cap out and know exactly the amount of time um, that all those daggers are going to take. Uh, Alright, so let's have some more fun here. Let's do a from value and let's say from the center. And there we go. Now they're emanating out from the center or you can use a keyword like end, or you can define an index value. So let's say that we want it to start emanating out from the, the fourth item here, the fourth div. And since arrays and node lists are zero based, that means that we would use the number of three. And now there we go, it's emanating out from that one. And here's another fun um, feature is you can make the amount or the each value negative and that simply inverts the uh, the timing effect so instead of starting at index number three and going out it's starting at the outer edge and working in to index value of three okay so uh, we've got lots more to cover here um, I know this is already exciting but we can also define an ease. So we can say uh, any ease here. So we'll say power one dot ease out. And what that is gonna do is instead of, um, actually to, to visualize this better, let's just start at the very beginning. Well, we can just go to that. And we're spreading out, let's say 1.5 seconds. Okay. Uh, actually, let's spread that out even more so it makes this um, easier to see. Okay, so easing, applying an ease effect to this is going to cause it to start out uh, with more spacing in between the start times, and then notice towards the end they kind of bunch up and they're closer together. Uh, so, you know, the opposite would happen if we did a ease in. So they're clumped together at the beginning and then they kind of spread out further towards the end. Again, any ease can be plugged in here. Have fun. Um, the next thing we can do is to, and these can all be combined by the way, but we're going to uh, do a grid. And to do a grid, you don't have to pay attention to any of this code. I've got some code that will rip through and create a bunch of um, boxes in a grid. So we just have to tell it the columns and rows. So in this case, we're gonna have 15 columns and seven rows. So notice that uh, we're beginning at the very beginning here. So in the, the upper left corner, that's index of zero and it's emanating outward in the whole grid from there. So again, we can say um, from the center and then you'll notice that 
there we go. It starts in the center and moves out. I think there's a little too much time there. Okay, so pretty fun. And again, if we change this number to be a negative amount, then it's gonna go from the outer edges in towards the center. Okay, and the fun doesn't stop there. We can actually, uh, we can define uh, an axis. So if we just wanted to worry about measuring the along the x-axis, we can do that. And so notice that it's not emanating on both axes um, or axes. It's only worrying about the measurements on the x-axis. Uh, so we, of course we can do the same thing for the y-axis and you'll see that effect emanating out. Well, I was gonna say we're emanating out from the center, but we're actually not because we made this number negative. Let's simplify this a little bit. Okay, so we're starting in the center and going out on the y-axis. I think it looks much cooler with no axis defined, but you're probably wondering, well, what if the grid, what if I, I have a responsive layout and it's not, maybe on the phone, it's gonna be uh, five columns instead of 15. Do I have to, you know, do some kind of media queries or something or check the, you know, inner width of the window? No, all you have to do is say auto and it will use the uh, get bounding client rect to figure it out automatically. And it just assumes that uh, things are uh, laid out from you know top left to bottom right, and you know wrap along the right edge just like text would. So this makes it very convenient for responsive layouts. Um, all right, uh, there we've made a uh, an interactive demo uh, in the docs that allows you to play around, and the the code updates down here for you so you can play with it and see how things are affected and have lots and lots of fun. You can even click on a square and it will update. All right, this is fun. I hope you enjoy Advanced Staggers in GSAP 2.1.